Interesting. I mean, I wear safety pins on my clothes sometimes now. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, does that count? That's the biggest one for me. A manager's trying to bring down a government. We're going to change the world. Our singer is fully insane. <laughs> Our bass player starts fights for laughs. This is punk! Okay, Steve is a sexual maniac. Come see us play. We're awful. Uh, Craig, I'll start with you. I feel like you've always had a knack for telling stories that are kind of left of center and finding unique ways that that blur the lines of reality. It, it really makes me understand a story that I thought I knew through a different lens. And, and I'm curious where these twists of things may have stemmed from and how you avoid every temptation to be obvious with your storytelling. Yeah, I, well, I guess it's the kind of stories that I like. I suppose you try and, I, you know, when you're trying to work out how to write, you're trying to, I guess in a way, you start off as a fan, you know, whether whether that's a fan of, not to get too highbrow, Shakespeare or, you mm. know, not that I think I'm Shakespeare, <laughs> sadly. But uh, but that that's the kind of stories I like. You know, I don't like to see the first five minutes of a story go, oh, I know exactly how this is gonna going to end but also I think it's for me it's it's about finding truth because real life is so much weirder and wilder than than we allow I think you know when I mean, look at what what is going on in the world has gone on in the last you know few years like is anyone sort of followed American politics recently like the world is crazy and I think we tend to sometimes just try and dumb it down a bit um, so that it feels real but what is real you know actually the world is a very very strange place and to find ways to channel that into drama I find really exciting as a writer and, and as an audience. Speaking of that truth Thomas how does uh, Craig's view and how he shaped Malcolm shape your view of reality? Um, well, I was just saying um, how how Craig did a great job of writing so well for each character. You could pick a line and get rid of the character name from the script, and you could probably tell who whose line that was. Um, the, you you could hear every character as you were reading it, um, which just makes our job as actors so much easier. It's it's yeah it's so much better when you've got everything kind of there in paper form and you can just kind of thumb through it and 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 it just you can you can play with it so much more as opposed to trying to figure out what you're going to do with these words and how you're going to make them feel real and grounded and genuine. Um, it's it's a relief really. Mm. It's very nice of you to say, but and thank you. But it was an incredible cast as well. I mean, Thomas is an incredible actor. All of our cast were amazing, and as a writer. Yes, you do have to do all of what Thomas is saying, but then to see that taken further by actors who really commit to the material and are brave enough to go there, because you know, as you say, the 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 characters in the world, it's big because they are big personalities. These are personalities who did change the world, but to find actors who can actually channel that in a way that both elevates the material and feels real and not fake, that really is a joy for a, for, a, for, a, for a writer as well because not every actor can do that. It takes a certain bravery to take that leap into the unknown uh, and free fall a bit, you know, uh, because there's a possibility you might fail. I think with any, with any sort of thing that's worth making, there has to be the possibility that you might fail and there has to be an inherent risk there. Um, right. Yeah. Did doing this project at all alter your relationship with rebellion, whether that's making bolder choices in what you do in your day to day life or as it relates to your art and craft? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, hopefully you learn something from every project that you work on. And I think, you know, continually you want to take risks as a creative person. Uh, but researching this world and looking at what these kids did who really had you know no formal training learning on the job taking incredible risks and being incredibly brave was an inspiration for me to not let myself get too comfortable because it's easy 
to, to, to get comfortable, especially as you get older and you have a, you know, a little bit of success. It was really a prompt to me personally to, to just continually try and push myself further. I'd say no, exactly the same, actually. Exactly the same. I feel the exact same way. Um, and I, I, even specifically with Malcolm, I, I, I do it. I admired his, his, um, his ability to just jump at ideas um, and not, not sit on them and think, oh, maybe that's a bit of a silly idea. And um, what would other people think? Will that actually be successful? Or he would, he, he worked on, on, on impulse and mm. wasn't afraid to make mistakes and. Um, I think that's just a good way to live. It means that you you mess up a bit more, but when you when you hit home, it's very satisfying. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, I definitely pulled away with that. We want to destroy that so the future can emerge. We're gonna kick this country awake if it kills us. Man, I, I just really loved this series and what you guys did with it. Uh, through your characters, there's there's so much to learn about what it means to be your most authentic self. There are moments of truth when Johnny may overhear his mates, what they may be saying behind closed doors. And then there's the fascinating relationship that Paul has with his parents and how he presents himself to them. But through the formation of the band, they, they find their individuality and voice. And, and I'm curious what questions may have surfaced for you as a result of doing this series, whether it's about being your most authentic self, going against the grain or what have you. It, that's certainly what I take away from playing this character and from learning so much about the Sex Pistols and punk is, uh, is I learned to stop caring what people think, you know. I think it's so cool this attitude that they have that they're going to wear whatever they want and they're going to sing about whatever they want. And I think that is something that is really exciting and I'm looking forward to a whole new generation seeing this band and hopefully being inspired by it. Yeah, hopefully people can kind of carry that tradition on. Mm. I bet mm -hmm. That's very important, I think. So. You're obviously here, you're, you're jumping into the minds of different creators, uh, Johnny and Paul. And was there was there anything in their creative makeup that may have made it into your own creative makeup? Interesting. I mean, I wear safety pins on my clothes sometimes now. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, does that count? That's the biggest one for me. Yeah, I think it just gave me, I mean, I, I already played a bit of drums and like, I've always loved uh, music, and but it, it, it gave me even more respect for the drummers of the world, you know, sitting at the back, holding everything together, you know, they're real, not not all of them, you know, there are some very famous drummers, but they're real sort of underrated, unsung heroes, I think, you know, a band is only as good at, as its drummer, you know, and without them the whole thing falls apart, so yeah. We were lucky enough to get to, we, for three months before we started shooting, we had a band camp, which felt a little bit like a punk X Factor. And mm. um, we, it was just us five lads in a room together, playing music, and Jacob was already an amazing musician, but uh, us, the others, had never done anything before like that, and I've never sung before. Um, so to get to do that for three months and form this brotherly relationship was just the most amazing setup into going into this really chaotic seven month shoot. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's something we'll always remember creatively, being, being in a band, basically. Uh, yeah. Was there a particular jumping off point for you in finding the greatest access to Johnny and Paul? Well, the, the archival stuff was very helpful, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. We were talking about the gift of YouTube and just the best thing about playing a real person is how much source material there is on them. Um, but there's, I, I think there's two things for me that were really helpful and that's, John has three books, but I particularly loved his first one where he's just so generous and so self-reflective about that time period. And at times it felt like speaking to him, which I wasn't actually able to do, but that was so helpful. And then the other one I reckon is when we started wearing our costumes in band camp. Um, it, it, there was a real... <coughs> There was a real click at that point where from me standing at the microphone in my own clothes to me standing in leather trousers, which I'd never worn with a bondage strap and brothel creepers. Now, I can't I can't stress enough how that changes the way you have to move. Um, just physically, you just can't walk in the same way that you did before. And that was a real uh, that was a real good point to leap into the character for me. What yeah, about you? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just just playing together loads like weirdly, we kind of Without even meaning to, even when we weren't acting, we started to to take on the roles of our characters a mm. bit, you know, um, without even noticing. Uh, so that was really good, and also just exploring that the the depth of like Paul's relationship with Steve, mm -hmm. which I wasn't aware of the like extent of, um, you know, because I've always 
listen to the pistols and stuff, but I didn't necessarily know all the nitty gritty details. So yeah, so yeah, me me and Toby had a lot of fun there, you know, sort yeah. of yeah. forming this really strong bond. Yeah, I'll, I'll cut you loose on this question. There, there's a scene in the series between two characters when they're listening to a song, and one of them mentions how that song rewired their brain. And, and I'm curious what songs may have rewired your brain. Interesting. I remember hearing uh, when I was about 12 years old, my dad played me Burma Shave by Tom Waits. Yeah. I've never heard anyone sing or tell a story like that before. Um, that really changed me. But and also, like when I was like four years old, my dad was playing me Quadrophenia, the album by the Who. And I mm -hmm. heard Keith Moon. Like I, I, I'm a musician and I'm, I'm a guitarist, but I actually wanted to be a drummer first because. I mean, that totally changed my life. Like being being four years old and hearing Keith Moon going around the kit, you know, and seeing footage of him doing it, that was I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, T totally changed my life. Uh, an anthem for me, truly. This is what I've what I've learned for this job, and is "God Save the Queen" by the Sex Pistols. That <laughs> lyric yeah. at the end, "No Future," to me is, is one of the most powerful lyrics I've ever heard in music, and the way it's so unapologetically screamed is just really powerful and uh, yeah that's definitely something that I'll never forget. Ladies and gentlemen, Sex Pistols.